Hi everyone, I'm Nikita. In this tutorial, we're going to see some of the fantastic features that the tags of Data Engine has dropped. So what is Data Engine? Data Engine is a new feature by Diagsub that lets you create a central platform in order to manage your data, metadata, labels, and predictions. Now you can curate your data in a Pandas-like interface and stream your custom data set directly into your What does that mean, though? What it means is, imagine you have a very big production data with a lot of metadata and annotations. Now, you no longer have to write complex time and resource intensive code in order to move your data into folders or structures that you would like. All you have to do is cherry pick features in your metadata that you would like your model to learn. And the DAG sub data engine will directly stream all matching data sets into your pipeline. As simple as that. So how do we use data engine? This uh, Google Collab has all the necessary links, documents, and repositories that you will need around to follow through with this tutorial. So let's do some setup first. If you're part of our beta group testers, you will need to set up your GitHub user and token for a custom package that you need to install. If you're not, just do a pip install DAGSAB and that should work. So I'm gonna install my Git token and packages that I will need. I will also need MLflow in 51, one for Voxel and another for tracking my experience. While our packages are installing, let's take a look at the repository that we will be using. Safter so Depth is an open source data science project that deals with monocular depth estimation, basically detecting the depth in 2D data. And we're gonna fork this into our repository. Just click on fork. Uh, Make a note of the owner name, their post name. We will be using it. So when you fork it, it is going to show up. Here you can also view all the data that was in the previous repository. And we're good to go if our pipeline is installed. OK, perfect. Now, remember the username and repository title I asked you to remember. We're going to use that here. This helps us. Uh, put all of our custom data sets that we create into this repository so it can be used. And this is the name of the custom uh, data set that we're creating. This is the name of the main data source, and this can further be divided into custom mini data sets as in how you need it. It's a custom name. I've given it data processed. You can give it any other name you would like. Now let's uh, create a data source uh, from the repository the name that you have provided and where the data is located. The location can also be a zip folder that you uploaded. It can also be remote buckets or remote storages. Here, we're just using our repository. And let's create our data source. This will require you to authenticate that slip. So just right click on that link and accept it. And it should be authenticated. OK. Currently, there is nothing. So why is that? Let's go look at our repository um, under our data sets. See that it's still loading. Let's give it a few seconds in order to load all of that metadata in. Few up oh, about 1,000 rows have been loaded so far. And this is a boilerplate metadata that the data engine will create. In order to keep track of files, this includes the path of or the name of the image, uh, and a custom ID that unique custom ID that we assign to it, where you can download it from, and the file. If I load it again, it should show yeah, all the data that we have. And if you look in your repository, it should go perfect to open. Now, uh, this is the boilerplate metadata that um that's a data engine created. You can add custom data metadata to it. Now we chose to add split location and is label. You can add whatever you feel like uh, adding to your file. It can even be from annotations. So split uh, splits is a new test and train. Location is the file path of where the image is, and label is whether it's depth or bound. Okay, let's create that and enrich or update our existing data source with this. So this is the new 
uh, metadata. It has the ETH label, label path, location, and our split, which is like test and train. And now we're uploading this to the data source in our repository. Let's give it a minute to work. You can, this, it's basically enriching the path column with all of this. You can play around, you can add more data, uh, metadata that you'd like. You can sometimes use annotations in this place. All of that works. So let's create a subset. Now we have 2,800 odd images. Say, I don't want all of them. I just want all the images that do not have a label or are not the depth label of the 2D images. So this was my metadata, metadata that uh, suggested that the image that I have is a regular 2D image. So let's filter those out. These are all the ones that we have. Next, we are going to, now this is good because this is our original image and this is the path to the label of the image. So we have, our image and the corresponding label. So we have the perfect data set and I'm I'm happy with this. I'm going to save it. All you need to do is dot save. Same thing. Uh, now I'm gonna further split this into train and test. As simple as that. Take the split. If it's trained, put it in the train folder, test it in the test folder. It's as simple and fast as that. And if you go to your repository and load, you should see all the three sub data sets that you created. Perfect. Now, here I created one. Say you already have a data set that you created say, in your previous repository or the last time you worked. In order to load an existing data source or a data set, just to get data set from, from and the name of the data set. So, since we saved this in the variable above, if you remember, we're gonna load the same thing again. This is what we had, perfect. Let's do the same for train and test. Let's try out walks. So I don't have any of the files on my system, so it's gonna take a few seconds in order to download it. Um, after that, it's gonna create a visual, interactive visualization of all the images. It's interactive in the sense you can see all the metadata that it has, what the images looks like, what images in which subsection, etc. Let's give it a few seconds to load. Okay, this is the voxel view. You can see all the images that we have. Uh, we can check out the is label. See, not a label, not a label. Oh, we did have all the false labels. Hmm, let's see the split. Some are trained, some are. This is how you can visualize your data set. Perfect. Um, now that we have all of our data and the subset, we've created all the data that we needed. Let's train our model. We're working with PyTorch. Let's uh, install that. Now, so far, we've been working with metadata in order to make our task simple, but we will have to convert the image into tensor. So we call the function that takes in the file path, loads the image and converts it to a tensor as a tensorizer. Now you can define a custom tensorizer with some pre-processing uh, that you want to, to be done on your images. It's kind of like a Lambda function where you just mention what you would like to be done to the image. But if you do not specify a tensorizer, we do a pretty good job of manually detecting what type of file it is, and we will uh, convert them to tensors for you. But they will not have any pre-processing done to them. It'll just be images to tensors. How do we do that? Um, just use the as ML data loader. Uh, the kind that we want. Here we're using PyTorch. It can be TensorFlow. It can be anything else you want. Uh, which column contains the path to your label data? It's uh, batch size if needed. Tensorizer is the previous function that I have. If you do not provide one, we will try to find out what image you have, or what file you have, rather, and uh, convert it for you. Strategy is the way that images are loaded. 
Remember I told you that uh, the data engine loads your image into the pipeline? Yes. So the default value is lazy, but in lazy, it will only download the image when asked. This may slow down the pipeline if you have a big data set. So I chose background, which means I'm happy with the file that I files that I have, download them all immediately. So this is my train data loader, and this is my test data loader. And that's it. So let's test it out. This is just the MLflow signature that we will be using for logging purposes in MLflow. You can skip that if you would like. Um, batch, let's, let's make sure that all of our images are correct. Let's load one of the images and their label and then see if it worked. There you go, so far so good. Now let's set up our DynXub repository to track all of our experiments and let's create our model. We have a simple unit model and in the training function, I'm just going to load my train data loader as is. No pre-processing, nothing. Everything has been set up with a simple one-line function. And let's run this and start our training. This should take a few seconds. I only run it for two epochs. We're being fast. May have a bit of high <laughs> training loss, but what's important is the data. Okay, now that our model has completed loading, let's test it out. Let's put it into evaluation mode. Let's load a test image. Well, I don't expect it to work very well, but it should. Let's say not bad for two iterations. And that is how you use your data engine with your data sets. Feel free to play around however you like. Let us know in our Discord. We'd love to see your projects. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you.